Welcome, and thank you for using this training video about how to incorporate environmental justice principles and requirements into the sociocultural effects evaluation process. Facilitating Equitable Outcomes is part of a Florida Department of Transportation video series providing guidance for sociocultural effects evaluations for transportation projects. The training is divided into three parts, each shown in a separate video. This video is part one. It provides an overview of the foundations of environmental justice and its role in transportation decision making. In the second part, we'll explore the scope of environmental justice analysis and key definitions that apply. The third part goes into more detail, building on the concepts introduced in part one and part two to illustrate a methodology for conducting a project level environmental justice analysis that incorporates recent FHWA guidance. Let's get started with the foundations of environmental justice analysis. There are several definitions of environmental justice among the various agencies, but most focus on a common set of core principles. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, which leads federal implementation of environmental justice and the Federal Interagency Working Group on the subject, defines environmental justice as the fair treatment and meaningful involvement of all people, regardless of race, color, sex, national origin, or income, with respect to the development, implementation, and enforcement of environmental laws, regulations, and policies. We can construe from this definition that no population group should bear a disproportionate share of negative environmental consequences from execution of federal, state, local, and tribal policies and programs. Environmental justice refers to a body of federal law and regulation that prohibits projects from focusing their negative impacts on low-income, minority, and other vulnerable population groups. Environmental justice, or EJ, has its origins in Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 as amended and the 1994 Presidential Executive Order 12898. Under Title VI, each federal agency is required to ensure that no person, on the grounds of race, color, or national origin, is excluded from participation in, denied the benefits of, or subjected to discrimination under any program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. All federal aid recipients, subrecipients, and their contractors are required to prevent discrimination and ensure non-discrimination in all of their programs and activities, whether federally funded or not. Title VI is one of the principal legal underpinnings for environmental justice by prohibiting such recipients from actions reflecting intentional discrimination or exhibiting unintentional discrimination on the basis of race, color, or national origin. Intentional discrimination or disparate treatment occurs when a person or group is treated differently because of their race, color, or national origin. This typically involves inconsistent application of rules or policies. Disparate impact discrimination is unintentional. It occurs when a policy or program, while neutral on its face, has the unintended consequence of being discriminatory to a protected group under Title VI without a substantial legitimate justification. Use of the word person in the Act is significant. Title VI discrimination protections apply to every person and are not conditioned on citizenship, immigration status, or a specific race. In the eyes of federal law, civil rights are human rights to which every person is entitled. Environmental justice was first identified as a national policy in 1994 when President Clinton signed Executive Order 12898. Under the order, each federal agency is required to identify and avoid disproportionately high and adverse effects on minority and low-income populations in the administration and implementation of programs, policies, and activities that could affect human health or the environment. The order calls for early identification of such effects and the potential for discrimination so that corrective action can be taken. Let's take a look at the similarities and contrasts of the Environmental Justice Executive Order and Title VI. While both address non-discrimination and minority populations, Title VI does not address low-income populations, as does the Executive Order. The Title VI concern is the potential for disparate treatment 
or disparate impact discrimination associated with programs, policies, and activities receiving federal aid. Under the executive order, our focus is on disproportionately high and adverse effects of federally supported actions. The executive order is signed by the President and mandates a process. Title VI, on the other hand, is a law through an act of Congress that broadly prohibits discrimination. Title VI is applicable to all federally funded activities, not solely those which may have an adverse human health or environmental effect on communities, so it is broader in scope than the executive order. Both are rooted in the constitutional guarantee in the 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution that all citizens are created equal and are entitled to equal protection. Both call for meaningful involvement of affected persons in the project decision-making process. In addition to the population groups protected under the executive order and Title VI, are those addressed in related legislation. Through these, non-discrimination protection is afforded to persons or groups on the basis of disability, sex, age, and religion. The related non-discrimination legislation is shown on this slide. Also shown is Executive Order 13166 pertaining to limited English proficiency. This legislation has its foundations in Title VI provisions relating to national origin discrimination. The U.S. Department of Transportation order shown represents the agency's revised environmental justice strategy. Issued in 2012, it is an update to the DOT's original 1997 Environmental Justice Order, which established a process for integrating the Executive Order and Title VI procedures in planning, environment, public involvement, and right-of-way. The revised DOT Order affirms the importance of early consideration of environmental justice principles calls for explicit consideration of effects on environmental justice populations for policies, programs, and activities having potential for disproportionately high and adverse effects on human health or the environment, and requires meaningful opportunities for involvement by environmental justice populations in the identification of project effects, alternatives, and mitigation measures. Three fundamental environmental justice principles are expressed in the DOT order to avoid, minimize, or mitigate disproportionately high and adverse effects on minority populations and low-income populations, to ensure the full and fair participation by all potentially affected communities in the transportation decision-making process, and to prevent the denial of, reduction in, or significant delay in the receipt of benefits by minority and low-income populations. The revised DOT order did not change any legal thresholds or statutory interpretations under the National Environmental Policy Act. NEPA calls for all practicable means to assure safe, healthful, productive, and aesthetically pleasing surroundings for all Americans and a systematic interdisciplinary approach to decision making which may impact human environments. Under NEPA, a finding of a potential disproportionately high and adverse effect on a protected population does not preclude a project from going forward, nor does it necessarily compel a conclusion that the project is environmentally unsatisfactory. Rather, such a finding should heighten our attention to alternatives, mitigation strategies, monitoring needs, and the preferences of the affected community. This concludes Part 1 of Facilitating Equitable Outcomes. The second part of the training on the scope and definitions used in environmental justice analysis is available on the department's website at the address shown. Links to resources referenced in this video are listed on the next slide and are also available on the website. Thank you for viewing this production of the Florida Department of Transportation.